As humans, we leave a footprint everywhere that we go, and the oceans are no exception. From overfishing to pollution to climate change, our oceans are in crisis. Our actions have jeopardized the vital benefits that we receive from the oceans every day. And while there are a number of issues that the ocean faces due to human impacts, the one that I really want to take a moment to focus on today is overfishing. Scientists agree that we are on a trajectory towards collapse in many of the world's fisheries if we do not act now. So the question becomes, what do we do to act? How do we, store, how do we restore balance to the seas? And shaping up our seafood choices is a great place to start. The average American consumes about 15.8 pounds of seafood every year. And depending on where you live in the country, that might be slightly more or slightly less. Here in Florida, as I'm sure you can imagine, we are above average. But if we take a step back and we examine a little bit of history, we see that the United States has a very strong foundation in farming off of the land rather than farming off of the sea. We are much more agricultural based versus continents like Asia and countries like China, which are more based on farming off of the oceans or aquaculture rather than intensive agriculture. Our conscious consumer movement here in the United States, states, which has taken off in the past decade, is more focused on agricultural products for this very reason. Consumers are asking questions like, where, in the, where is the beef that I am buying from and how is it fed? How is the chicken that I am buying raised? Or were pesticides used to grow these vegetables? All of these are important questions, but there are some that we are not asking. Asia dominates global aquaculture production at almost 90%, and China alone accounts for 62% of that. The United States is 13th in the world in terms of global aquaculture production. For this very reason, we import up to 90% of our seafood since world capture fisheries plateaued in the 1980s. Because we are farming very little of our own seafood and the oceans can no longer supply the demand we are pushing our ocean's boundaries further and further. The oceans are the life support system of our planet, the blue heart of Earth, if you will. And although they cover 70% of our planet, their bounty is not limitless. A glaring 70% of fisheries are either exploited, overexploited, or have already collapsed. Over the past century, biomass of predatory fish worldwide has declined by two-thirds. This includes species that we're all familiar with, such as cod, halibut, salmon, and tuna. A lot of us have probably eaten at least one of those before. Over half of this decline has occurred just in the past 40 years. This has left voids in the food chain, where smaller, more vulnerable fish are filling in. And this is a phenomenon called fishing down the food chain. And this is precisely what is happening today. Advances in technology allow us to take more and more, but there is less and less out there. Huge nets are dragged behind boats. They rip up habitat in their path, and they accumulate bycatch that is then thrown overboard dead. Aquaculture has the potential to be a solution to our huge footprint on the oceans. But when managed inefficiently or conducted poorly, the environmental consequences can be huge. Sometimes they even equal or surpass the effects of wild catch fisheries. So with all of that information that I just gave you, what can we do? You're probably thinking to yourself, well, the situation looks pretty bleak right now. I don't really know what I can do. But I am here today to give you an answer to that overwhelming question of what can we do? I am here today to tell you that we can think globally about our oceans and act locally with our individual decisions. There are small steps that each of us can take to increase our sustainability. And the word sustainability and sustainable gets thrown around a lot when talking about solutions to really big problems. So what does it mean here in this context? Sustainable seafood means making deliberate decisions to prevent further breaking of our ocean's boundaries. Sustainable seafood is a way for us to replenish the oceans and still meet the demand for products. So one of the first ways that you can all increase your sustainability is the next time you go out to a restaurant 
and you decide to order an item on the menu that has seafood, start by asking a simple question, such as, where does the restaurant get their seafood from? And if your waiter doesn't know, they'll direct you to somebody who can give you an answer. Similarly, if you know there is a particular type of fish or seafood that you're probably going to order, your favorite, so to speak, go home and do some research on that product or that species so that you know what questions to ask next time you're out and you make the decision to order that. Such as, how is this species caught? Is there bycatch associated with it? Where could this product have come from? Because oftentimes there are numerous sources for a product, and some are better than others. Another step that you can take is when you're grocery shopping. Ask the person behind the seafood counter, where did this come from? Read labels while you're shopping, rather than just looking at the price. We all have a tendency to buy what is on sale because it's a great feeling to save money. But I encourage you to buy that pricier item if it's the better decision because our consumer choices have a much larger accumulative effect. And if the task of doing research on your own seems daunting, and you say, well, I don't really have any knowledge about the oceans. I don't really know anything about fisheries. You know, I don't, I don't know how to do research. There are tools out there designed to help you make the best decisions, even if you don't have a knowledge base about oceans or the fisheries. And I'd like to take a moment to highlight one of those here from National Geographic. Their seafood decision guide is a compilation of information designed so that consumers can make healthy and environmentally friendly seafood choices. It will tell you things like where your favorite <coughs> seafood ranks in sustainability, where the, what the mercury level might be, where that item places on the food chain, and why it matters to know any of this. For example, salmon, probably something that most of us here today have eaten at one point or another. This will tell you that Atlantic salmon should be avoided in terms of sustainability. While wild-caught salmon from Oregon, Washington, or California is an all right choice, but Alaskan salmon is best because the fishery is well managed and the methods used to catch it are not environmentally damaging. So the key takeaway is to be aware. Imagine if each of us were intentional and informed about our decisions. Not only would our fisheries be healthier, but our oceans would be healthier, which means that the life support system of our planet, the blue heart of Earth, would be stronger. I challenge each of you today to become a more conscious seafood consumer. Consider the more or less 15.8 pounds of seafood that you will consume over the course of this year and all the years to come. Consider the footprint that you want to leave behind through those seafood choices. The first step to making a difference is realizing that a difference needs to be made. Think about the impact that you want to leave on our oceans through your individual seafood choices. Thank you.